So I don't push pressure myself to like stick to a cue or anything. Um, yeah, I feel like I ran, I feel like that train left the track and I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 50. Woo! <laughs> I feel like I need a celebration noise there. Episode 50 of the Love and Citrus podcast. Today is Tuesday, February 4th, 2020. Ah, I'm so excited. This is going to be a jam packed episode. I feel like there's going to be lots of interruptions because I have two dogs here. My mother-in-law's dog is also here, and so at some point, I don't know when, they're going to come and pick her up, but who knows? Her dog is going to be perfectly quiet. It's my dog that is so loud and loves to bark at every car that comes by. I'm wearing my glasses, but I'm going to take them off, but I don't think they're too um, reflective. I think I could podcast in them. I'm looking at myself right now in the, in the camera because that's the only time I can see myself when I take them off. I cannot see myself, but hopefully I am looking at you. I wore contacts yesterday because I thought that I was gonna podcast yesterday on Monday, and then I ended up having to do something else. And so, yeah, I just I didn't wanna wear uh, contacts another day. They have just become kind of uncomfortable for me. So glasses it is, but it's still me. I love my new pink glasses, but I'm already on a tangent. So let's get into um, some well, let's actually talk about weather first. So it is getting nice and chilly here. We had a weekend where it was 80 degrees here in North Texas, um, just for a little bit. It was mostly like in the 70s and 60s, which is still crazy for February. Um, then today the temperature started to dip, so I got to bundle up in some knitting. I was actually wearing a um, cardigan, my breezy cardigan, which I believe I was also wearing last Tuesday because I recorded um, a podcast last Tuesday, and I think I was wearing my breezy cardigan, um, but um, breezy by Hannah Fettig, one of my favorite, I wear it all the time. And then today I am wearing my Half Moon Oracle shawl, which is by Kristen Lear, who is Vol and Vine Yarns. Um, this is not Vol and Vine Yarns that I knitted out of, it is all Graceland wool, and if you go far back far enough in my project page, which I've linked below, you will see exactly what the yarns were called, but they were all part of a Harry Potter club, um, so I'm not sure if they were produced again. Anyway, such fun. Um, it's so good to wear knits. Tomorrow it's going to be like in the 30s. I think it's going to start the day in the high 30s and the temperature is going to drop. And so, of course, like being in the south, if you live anywhere in the south, um, they're already like salting the roads and like all the signs on the highway say like winter, advi winter storm advisory, which people who are north of us, I'm sure, are just like laughing their um, bums off because <laughs> like it is a big deal when it when it's a chance of sleet or snow here because we don't have the equipment to clear the roads so um we got a email from our like operations director from our school that here's what happens if school gets canceled anyway it gives you that little bit of excitement so i'm like extra excited right now school will most likely happen. I know that, but it's still fun to dream about. Okay, let's get into knitting. There will be a fun little giveaway later on in the episode when I get to news, so stay tuned for that if you want to um, um, enter. Actually, you can enter right now. All you need to do is comment on this episode and you'll be entered to win. I'm gonna give away the items on my next episode. So if you wanna see what they are, wait till later. If you wanna enter now and just peace out, I guess I guess you can, um, but please stay a little longer. I have lots to talk about. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for 50 episodes. I, again, I'm gonna talk about it um, more later, but you're the reason that I keep sitting down every week and recording a podcast so it's a lot a lot of fun um, i'm drinking plum deluxe tea again today i have this cute little mug that i got on a trip this summer um i think the flavor i'm drinking is like cranberry earl gray it's quite good i need to actually put stuff in my tea like milk or something i feel like that would make it taste even better but um 
it's pretty much calorie free, I think, when I just drink it plain, which is, which is great too. Um, okay, so let's talk about whips. It's the first podcast of a new month, which means I have some new things that I've casted on. I don't have anything finished this week. Um, I do have a project I'm putting aside, but um, it's not finished yet. So I wanna talk first about my Tanya. I have made a ton of progress on this sweater. This is Tanya by Caitlin Hunter or Tegna or whatever, however you wanna call it. Um, so last week I had just finished the lace at the bottom. There is my progress keeper, my little Starbucks cup, and I have done quite a bit. It almost looks like a skirt. It is flared on purpose. You start out with a bunch of, um, a bunch more stitches, and then as you're doing the lace, you decrease a little bit, and that's really great because that's how my body is shaped. I have much wider hips than I do like rib cage and bust, so I'm thinking this is gonna be really great for me. It's already an oversized um, sweater, which would work fine, but I think that's gonna make it fit really well. So I am about an inch away. This is a cropped sweater, although I'm not making it cropped. Um, I'm supposed to knit for my size to 14 inches, and I believe my boxy sweater is was 15 inches, and I'd like it to be just a little bit longer than that. Now, factoring in that this is going to stretch a lot, um, when I block it, I've already steamed this a little bit, but I know I'm gonna get like a lot more stretch when I actually wet block it. So I'm gonna knit to the 14 inches, knowing that it's going to stretch to hopefully about 16 inches um, before I split for the underarm. So that will be perfect for me. So I'm about an inch away from there. I've got 13 inches unstretched. I know I'm gonna get a little more length. And then after that, I'm gonna split for the sleeves. I'm hoping I can do that tonight. Um, so I can, I'm sorry, split for the front and back, not the sleeves. It's where the sleeves will go, but split for the armholes. So then I will start working, I think the back first and the front, or you know what? I could do whatever order I want, I guess. Um, but I am going to make the armholes longer than for my size that I chose because it's a fitted sleeve and I have read and heard and different people that have made it that the sleeves are too tight. Um, so I'm gonna actually jump up, I think, two sizes from my body size for my armhole. So that's just, you know, looking at the schematic, um, you know, you can measure your own arm and see how, how what is that called? Circumference, you can figure out the circumference of it and figure out what's gonna work for you. But I think I'm gonna go up two sizes from the size that I am knitting to make the armhole deeper. I believe I'm gonna have plenty of yarn. I mean, I just need to do a front and a back. I could weigh these. There we go, had to unsnap them. But I've got a decent amount of yarn. I mean, probably, I mean, that's a lot still. I don't know if I have quite half, maybe I do. I could weigh them to see how much I have, but I think I'm gonna have plenty of yarn to do that, plus the sleeves are super short, so I am not worried about that one bit. But yeah, lots and lots of progress this week. I'm pretty proud of myself for sticking to it. I thought I was gonna just give up after the lace because I love the lace so much. I thought it would just get set aside to uh, live in like a stockinette, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, not get worked on basically because I was bored of it, but I have done so much. And my um, first time doing helical knitting has been a huge success. Again, I did look it up and I practiced it in a swatch before I did it, but it is working out so well. This is absolutely the coolest. In my stockinette, I have, zero place where I where it's like twisted or carried yarns. You can't see where I'm carrying the yarns at all. You can see there's one of them. It is just so, so cool. So I will try to remember to link the technique that I used um, down in the description box. If I forget, go to episode 49 because I definitely linked it there. Um, but yeah, it's very simple, very easy. Um, basically your yarns chase each other around the um, around the round and what's funny is I'm almost like there's where I'm gonna change next time I'm almost back to my beginning of round isn't that crazy I just moved my marker up <laughs> so that I can see how much progress I make for next week but I am loving this I'm hoping to like I said split for the front and back tonight and then hopefully by next week I can have at least a front or back finish but 
We'll see because I got some new projects going on here. So that is whip number one. I am loving that. I also had to start a new pair of socks, you know, because it is a new month. And so I was just looking at my fingering weight yarn back here, trying to decide what to cast on. I, I kind of thought it might be a good time to start making some socks for Christmas because why not? Um, but then as I was looking at colors, I was really getting drawn towards pinks. And I think because it's like February and Valentine's Day, I don't know, it just kind of went together in my head. So I ended up choosing this yarn and it's not, I'm hoping it's a little bit brighter in the camera when I go back to edit this because um, it is really, like when you first glance at it, like it looks pink and purple and then it's got like green and I don't even know, like light, light and dark, light and medium green, even like a silvery gray. I mean, it's just got all these beautiful, beautiful colors. And to me, it was like Valentine's Day. It was perfect. I've only done the teensiest little bit because um, I just wanted to get it started and then I worked on it. I don't know. I, ha I haven't really had my morning duty this week at, at work, which is usually when I work on my socks a little bit. And so I haven't gotten that much done. So I had already picked this out, but then I still was thinking maybe I'd want to knit it for somebody for Christmas. So I thought I'll text my mom and my sister. They both love socks and I'll see if either one of them likes the colors. And my sister like immediately texted me back. Um, she said that they weren't her colors cause I kind of knew that, um, but that her girlfriend saw them and would love them. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, let me see if, mo if mom wants them first. And my mom immediately said, oh, I'll, I'll pay you to make them if you make them for um, her. And I'm like, okay <laughs> so i i love to knit for um, my family so much and um i definitely don't mind knitting for my sister's girlfriend at all i just thought it was so funny i mean i'm gonna make these socks anyway so it doesn't matter to me um but my mom said it would be great if you can make them for her birthday and so i said well i hope her birthday is um not in February because these won't be done until the end of February. And of course her birthday is February. But my mom said, oh, it doesn't matter. She can get them anytime, who cares? <laughs> so it's so funny, people who, people who don't knit, um, they, even my family who knows, like they have an idea of how long things take, um, they, they just don't rec recognize that like, you know, I already have projects planned. <laughs> I need like months warning if you want something. That's why I'm doing Christmas now. But anyway, it's it's fine because my family is so flexible. Like they don't they don't care at all. I could give them something and say it was for this past Christmas and they would be totally okay with it. They're so flexible. Um, but my mom did say she would pay me. Um, and I feel weird accepting payment from my mother for socks I'm already gonna make. And so I told her that I would ex only accept payment in the form of Fresh Market Coffee, which if you're not familiar, Fresh Market is a sort of like a grocery store. It has, spe has specialty stuff, um, but I always loved going there growing up because they had coffee that you could like, just in these bins that you could go and it smelled so good. You could, you could get a little sample cup of coffee. I loved coffee even when I was a kid. Of course it had like mostly milk and sugar, but I loved the coffee flavor from a young age loved coffee and so I would love getting the little thing of coffee with like mostly half and half and sh tons of sugar and they also had a candy bins oh my gosh it was so cool I, I think their gummies are the best gummies out there but Fresh Market is as far as I know like an, more of an eastern United States thing that's the only place that I've seen it um, is I've been to them in like Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. So I don't know. We don't have them as far as I know in Texas and I miss my fresh market coffee. So whether it's birthday or Christmas or sometimes my mom, she's so sweet, she'll send like Halloween packages to me and Kent. Always she makes sure to include fresh market coffee and pretty much, since I'm the only coffee drinker, it lasts for a while and so I get really sad when my fresh market coffee supply is running low because that means I have to buy something from the grocery store here, <laughs> which I'm sure there's great stuff, but it's just like, it feels like home. So I told her, you know what? If you wouldn't pay me, I will accept payment in the form of coffee. So that's the agreement. So 
These are socks. Oh, geez. There we go. Socks for um, my sister's girlfriend for her birthday in February, which definitely won't be finished, but they're going to be for coffee. So what could be better than that? Making something for somebody special and getting something you love in return. So hey, there you go. So much love for February. I love that. But those are my February socks. I will probably be working on them more as uh, socks I think to work I tend to work on a lot on the weekends when I am out and about okay what other projects do I have going on oh my granny stripe blanket okay let me bend down here and get my granny stripe blanket so my granny stripe blanket I have put some work in this week but it is retiring to the hibernation um, I don't know it's going to into hibernation i've already put it in hibernation on ravelry because it is not something i'm going to be working on every day anymore so here is my beautiful granny stripe blanket it's all it's folded up so so nicely um, but this was my project for make 30 for 30 which was a make along that ended on it yesterday actually um, and it doesn't have to end if you want to continue we'll keep going and i'll and i'll talk more about that in news um, but this week let's see and unfold it here. Where is my marker? I gotta find, what did I do in the last week? Okay, not much, <laughs> not much from that marker there. Um, but as in the whole of the make along, which was a 30 day challenge to work 30 minutes on a project for 30 days, I did about just over 10 inches. So there's my marker from the very beginning of the make along all the way up to there. So just over 10 inches, just by working on it 30 minutes a day for 30 days. Now, I don't think I've talked about this on the podcast yet, but I knew my blanket was wide. I knew I'd cast on a lot of, or chained a lot to start, but I didn't know quite how wide it was. So I finally decided to measure and this blanket is 60 inches wide. So yeah, that's pretty big. So I probably have quite a ways to go on it because a 60 inch wide blanket, for me, it needs to be longer than 60 inches in length. So I'll probably do 80 inches for that. Um, I'm at 30 total right now, so 50 more inches to go. I'm not even sure I have enough scrap yarn to do that. Oh, by the way, that blanket pattern is adapted from um, the Granny Stripes pattern by Lucy of Attic 24. It's a free pattern originally in DK weight yarn, but I'm doing mine in fingering. And again, you can go to my Ravelry project page, except this time you're gonna have to go all the way to the bottom, all through like 300 projects or whatever, to my hibernating projects because it is hibernating now <laughs> because I'm not working on it every day. Um, but yeah, I need 50 more inches until I feel like it's gonna be complete. So since I did 10 inches in the last 30 days, if I really wanted to finish it and not spend a lot of time on it, I could do 30 minutes a day and finish it in five months, which for me, that is not that bad. So some people might think that is like a really long time to be working on a project, but I've already been working on this for two years. So five months, I'm like, oh wow, that is, that's super great. I could finish it this year if I if I want. <laughs> so I'm not going to be working on it right now, but eventually after I have a little break from it, I'll probably um, pull it back out and work on it. Um, maybe for another make 30 for 30 or maybe just on the weekend. Um, I'm also going to have it sit in this basket. This is a really great floppy basket I've had for years and years. I don't even know where I got it from. It's just going to sit in this basket with the hook and uh, I already have a ball of yarn attached and it's gonna stay here in my yarn room. And there's a lot of times where I come downstairs and I'm either waiting for Kent to be ready to go or I'm waiting for somebody to pick me up to go somewhere and I'm just sitting here waiting. So rather than like getting on my phone or whatever, I could sit down and you know put in a few clusters on my granny stripe blanket. So we'll see if that actually happens, but it's gonna be there sitting next to the couch down here just in case I want to do that. Okay, I actually have one more like whip um, 
but I'm gonna save it to talk about when I go to news and talk about Make 30 for 30 again. So now I'm gonna talk about a project that I am close to casting on, and I've got the yarn all wound up and ready. Um, I probably won't start it tonight just because I wanna work on my Tanya and get that ready, um, but I am gonna finish my swatch tonight, at least that's the plan. So this, uh, coming up in like two months, yeah, two months, April is two months away. I guess it is. In two months is DFW Fiber Fest. I'll probably start talking about it more and more as it gets closer because this is like the main event in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, DFW Fiber Fest, I want to say this is an is a like monumental year. That's not the right word. Um, but it's either like year 10 or year 15 or something special that they're celebrating, a celeb celebratory year. <laughs> um, but anyway, it is a wonderful festival. I've been going for three or four years consistently, um, and so I'm really excited about it. It's held in Irving, Texas at a convention center, and I usually just head up there on Friday and Saturday and hang out and look at yarn, and it's really fun. So I'm super excited about that. I'm not taking any classes as of yet. I'm actually really sad because I tried to sign up for a class and um, I think because I was on my phone, it kept kicking me. I can't remember what happened. Something happened where it kept like kicking me back and erasing all of my information where I'd have to type it in again. It was really frustrating. And um, because of that, the class that I wanted got full. Um, so I immediately went and wait, wait listed it so I would be high up on the wait list, but so far I haven't gotten a, an email saying that I'm in the class, so fingers crossed. I mean, I don't want anyone to like have to miss um, Fiberfest, of course, but I would love, love to be able to take a class. The classes, I took four last year, they're incredible. But anyway, they're having um, their first make along for the Fiber Festival. So basically, um, there is a knitting and, cr and a crochet project. There's two different projects for the cow and the cow, um, cow with a K and cow with a C. Um, and they're both by designer Carissa Browning. And I had not heard of her before, but then I looked at her stuff and I'm like, this feels familiar. I, I love her stuff, especially her knitted designs. Um, so I am going to be knitting centrifugal, which is a garter stitch shawl. You can knit it in multiple sizes. You can knit it with three colors or five colors. I guess you could knit it with one color or two colors if you really wanted to, um, but it's designed in like de several different ways, the three and the five, and then several different sizes. So I'm planning to do five colors and I think the extra large size. I still haven't bought the pattern yet to look at the details, but I'm already swatching. So like I'm pretty much committed at this point. Um, but it's fingering weight. I don't know much about the crocheted um, project, but I really, really liked the knitted one. So that's the one I decided that I'm going to do. And it's two months away, which is great. I definitely need that long for a big old shawl. Um, so I wanted to show you my yarn. I put up some, I, I pulled out a bunch of stuff back here and I was playing with it. And I came up with a few color combinations I liked and I put them on Instagram. And I don't know why I do this. I think that Pretty much I've made a choice by the time I put the vote on Instagram, but sometimes I just like need reinforcement. And what's funny is this time, most people voted for the colors that I did not choose. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I think that sometimes I'm just like unsure, especially about colors. And um, when I saw that everyone had picked the other colors, I was like, oh, I don't know. And somebody gave me really great advice. They said, that um, if you are still unsure by the popular vote, then you need to go with the other choice. That's the one you actually really like. I was like, oh, that's true. That, that's, that was my gut at the beginning. I also like to ask my husband because he's super good with color and the, this is the palette that he chose as well. So anyway, this is not, not colors that I normally will go for, but they all kind of looked great. They were all like sitting together. So these are my colors. I have them like this because I was um, taking some pictures of them and I was like stacking them and stuff. And I was also trying to decide on the order that I want. They look so different in the hank than they do in the cake and then they look even different knitted. So, you know, you just gotta see them all the different ways is what I've learned. And I would rather take, what I've also learned in the past year is I would rather take a lot of time 
starting a project by swatching it and playing with color and making sure I really like it because it's you never like finish a project and go um I wish I hadn't spent so much time on this I think well maybe that's not true but you I feel like you remember the projects more where you're like I wish I had stopped at this point and taken this out and fixed it or I wish I had stopped at this point and like not use that color because like I could just feel that it wasn't working. So I've learned from my mistakes that it's better for me to just really take my time in the beginning and sort it out and make sure I like it. So I will talk, talk about these colors in just a second, but basically what I'm doing now is a little swatch because this is a color blocked shawl. And so I'm trying to see if I like the order that I have picked. So I've got two colors here now and I just started in the second one. I'm just doing garter stitch because that's what the shawl is in and I'm doing like eight rows of each, just to see. Um, if I don't love how it looks color blocked, I might actually do a transition where I'll stripe the next color in, and I can do that in the shawl as well, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'm testing it out. I wanna finish that swatch. That didn't take me very long at all last night. Um, it's also good because I can gauge with that. <laughs> so, okay, I've got a few different things here. I have um, two yarns that are from um, the Yarn at Home Mom, which I got, I believe, in Oregon or Seattle. This is a Pacific Northwest dyer. Does it say where she dyes? I think Oregon, maybe. So this color, this green, is called Calmeopsis. I don't know. Y'all can read that because I have no idea. So I've got that one, and then I've got another one of hers. This one is called Pictures of You, and that is the Yarn at Home Mom. Love, love, love her yarn. Um, I also have a local Texas dyer, I believe. I believe it is. And this yarn has tried to be so many things and it's just never worked. So I'm hoping this is the one. This is Savvy Skeins and the colorway is Boots and Spurs and it's actually Sparkle. It's got Stellina in it. So I cannot wait to use this. I think this is gonna be the center color of the shawl uh, because it is the only one that's Sparkle it seems to make sense to me to be in the middle. These other two, the ones that have yellow in it, these are actually from um, Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Horde Yarn. I don't know which of them dyed it, but these are from my advent calendars the past two years, and these are the Hufflepuff colorways. So this was from 2018, love this one, and this one was from this year, 2019. So I think that'll be really fun. The order that I'm going with, I think I took a picture of it. What is the order that I'm doing? Eh, I think it's this, then this, this in the middle, and then we transition to more yellow, this, and then that. That looks really pretty, doesn't it? So then I'm, I can't hold these up like this. Imagine that. I have a picture of them stacked. It looks so good. I just love cakes of yarn stacked on top of each other. I think they look so pretty. Um, but after this, for sure, I'm gonna be um, stuffing these into my large five skein float tote and putting each of these into their own little um, yarn bucket so that I don't have a mess on my hands. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Centrifugal by Carissa Browning is the knit along this year for DFW Fiberfest. There is a crochet along. Um, so the best way I think to find information for that is to go on Ravelry to the groups tab and find the DFW Fiberfest group. Join that and then there's a thread about both about the make along. So that's where I found all the information. Um, basically, I just needed to know the pattern and when it started. It already started over the weekend, but um, obviously finish it before the Fiber Festival if you're going, and if not, just have fun making it. So I am excited to get that casted on. Hopefully you will get to see some progress on it next week. Okay, we're gonna head into some questions. These are taken from the Love & Stitches Ravelry group in the Ask Me thread. I am about to answer the final two questions on there. So if you have more questions for me, you can head to the Ravelry thread, ask your questions, or if you don't use Ravelry, feel free to message me on Instagram or ask on, on the video um, on YouTube. However you wanna ask, 
is totally fine with me. I love answering questions. Okay, so this question comes from Knit Crochet Dreamin, and she says, your wedding shawl is exquisite. Did you say, did you once say that it was beaded? If so, could you give us a close look at it so that we may see how the beads work in that pattern? And only if you want to share details like approximately how long did it take you to complete? How many patterns did you look at before deciding on this one? And maybe any ups and downs you experienced while knitting it, thank you. Okay, so this is a question I skipped over last week because um, when I sat down to record, I was like, oh man, I, I need to like actually take my wedding shawl down. It's actually hanging up on the wall behind me um, in, a, in like a wooden frame. Um, and I decided actually not to take it down because I did spend a lot of time weaving cotton yarn through there to hang it without um, stretching the, um, what did I use? I think it's like a wool silk blend, lace, yes, a wool silk. I didn't want to stretch the wool silk yarn, so I used cotton, sugar and cream cotton, and I like wove it through and then hung it up like that so it's strung across the cotton and so most of the pressure is on that. So I decided not to take it down, but I did get some video for you while it was still light outside and got the close-ups and the details. So I would love to talk about my wedding shawl. It's something that I wanted to make long before I even met my husband and knew he was gonna be my future husband. Um, so let's start with what I always wanted to make. So there, there was a, some period of time that I was already a knitter and I learned about the concept of a wedding ring shawl. And a wedding ring shawl basically is a shawl that's knit so thin that you could pull it through like a wedding band. Um, this is not knit in um, cobweb weight, which I would feel like a, a wedding or a wedding ring shawl would probably have to be cobweb weight. This is actually knit in lace, so it is really fine, but it is not that small. I did actually end up buying cobweb lace at one point before I even met Kent because I thought one day I would make a wedding ring shawl. Well, I never did. I, I almost did. I um, There was a pattern, a specific pattern I wanted to do and I think like Gossamer sold it. I know I, it was really hard for me to find, like it wasn't available digitally at the time. Um, I messaged people on Ravelry asking if I could like um, pay them to borrow their copy because it felt wrong for somebody to just copy it and give it to me when I hadn't paid for it. Anyway, it was just, I eventually, um, actually I think the pattern now is available um, for down, like a digital download, which is great. Um, but by that time it was like too late. I, I even tried knitting it a little bit, but it's super traditional where you have to do like the border back and forth, all kinds of stuff. So by the time I actually got engaged, um, that dream was a little bit like, I had kind of gotten past it, but I still wanted a wedding shawl. The problem was I got engaged March 25th and I got married in the same year in July <laughs> 22nd, which is, if you do that math, it was about four months, right? March, April, May, June, July, so four months. So I knew I only had four months to make a shawl. So the traditional cobweb weight was like, not gonna happen. But fortunately, since it was March 25th when I had gotten engaged, guess what was the very next weekend? DFW Fiber Fest. It's always the first week of April, just about. Um, so that went, worked out perfect. I was able to go pick out my yarn at Fiber Fest and my beads as well. From There's a wonderful bead shop in Fort Worth that tends to vend at Fiber Fest and I love to get my beads from them. So that was the process of picking out the yarn, but of course I had to pick out the pattern. And the pattern I ended up with is called a Midsummer, Summer, a Midsummer Night's Dream Lace Shawl. I feel like I've always said a Midsummer's Night's Dream. A Midsummer's Night Dream. I think I've always said it wrong. A Midsummer Night's Dream. That doesn't roll off the tongue for me as well. But that's what it's called. It's by Judy Anderson, and it's a beautiful pattern. Lots of lace, all lace actually, um, and some beading in the center panel. Um, I think at the top in the center panel and then um, in the edging of the shawl, but it is, it is knit from the top down and it is all one piece. It is seamless. So no adding on the edging or anything, which made it much more doable um, in the time frame that I had. Um, so, oh, the Artful Bead. That's what the Fort Worth store is called, the Artful Bead. 
Um, so I have all of my notes here in Ravelry, which makes it wonderful. So I started this project on April 10th and I actually finished it quite quickly. I finished it on June 1st. So that's about um, April, May, about two months it took me to make this. Now I was working on it like every day. I did not want to be stressed about finishing my wedding shawl um, before my wedding. Um, I think I actually started it before I had a dress. So I just knew it had to fit, it had to work. So I got an off-white color. Um, let's see, I'm looking at the pictures here. If you do wanna go on my Ravelry and look for my wedding shawl, I've got pictures of from when, it, when I did my swatch. These cards here, let me show you these. So I really wanted, oh, here's my swatch. I did a swatch like that. I think that's the edging pattern. And then I made these, I really wanted to make sure I would be able to finish it without feeling stressed. At the time I was teaching kindergarten, I was a classroom teacher. And so I was just a little bit busier <laughs> because being a classroom teacher is a lot of work. Um, but I did still take time to knit during the school day. And lace is something I just love so much. Like I will work on it anytime. Like as long as I can see my chart, I can like listen and maybe not talk, but I can be, I can be social and listen. Um, so what I did is, oh, that's, that's actually really funny that I did that. So I, I made some note cards, this is such a teacher thing. And each of these note cards has different sections of the shawl on it. It's got like um, part one, the edging, part two, the transition, part three, the body, and so on. And then I have written down um, how many rows I would need to do and like the date you can go look at that if you want to see it closer um, But like the date and how many rows I would have to do each day so that I would finish the shawl in June And so I actually had it scheduled for me to finish it June 15th and I, I guess I finished it early I guess I just got so excited, um, but that's really funny So that so that's how I broke down the project to make sure I would finish it on time as I literally wrote out like there are X amount of rows in this pattern. If I do this many every day, then I will get finished by my deadline. Um, but yeah, that's that's the shawl. It is, it is really, it was really, really fun to make. It ended up with this like wrinkled pile. Let me see if I have a picture of it. I don't know if I have a picture of it unblocked, like completed unblocked. Okay, so I lied. It's not knit from the top down. It's knit from the um, outside in. That's pretty cool. And it is beaded on the edging in the middle and the top. And the way that the beads are put on is you put them on with a crochet hook, like you slip the stitch off of the needle and pop and onto a crochet hook and pop the, you know what? I haven't done this in a while. I probably shouldn't explain it, but you don't pre-string the beads. You put them on as you knit the stitch, which is so much fun. I love doing beading and I love doing lace. Um, and here's a picture of me with my dress, which was also lace and it was like champagne colored underneath and with my shawl. So yeah, so there we go. Did I answer all the questions, the time frame? Um, I guess I just looked at lots and lots of different lace patterns, lace shawl patterns. Um, and I wanted something that wasn't super like um, the traditional like kind of almost like Celtic knots. I didn't want too many of those. Mine does have that in the center, but I didn't want it to be too like whatever that um, error or is. I didn't love that look. I wanted something a little more modern maybe, um, but I, once I found that one, it was just the right one um, for me. So I just wore the shawl while I was walking down the aisle, which gave me lots of good pictures from the back. I also wore it for pictures. Um, and then uh, my maid of honor took it from me and took it off. And I did my cer the ceremony without the shawl on. But we also took some pictures at the reception, like when the sun was setting with the shawl too. So it was, it was very special. It was very pretty. I did not have a veil. I guess that would be good to say. I did not have a veil. Um, so that was like my decorative piece um, besides my dress was that shawl. So yeah. Yeah, I talked a long time about that. Oh my gosh, I hope that's stuff that you actually were interested in hearing. <laughs> okay, I have one more question. This is from Sal's Creations, my friend Sally, hi. And she says, hi Natalie, I was just curious about your process of choosing your next project. Do you select the pattern first and then the yarn 
or do you go through your stash and see a yarn or see a yarn in the shop and just have to have it and then choose a pattern i love watching your podcast oh thank you sally okay so um choosing my next project okay i usually start thinking about the next project that i'm gonna make about halfway through the one that i'm already doing <laughs> so for example right now i'm knitting tanya and i like like I'm not really a sweater knitter hoping to change that, but like I kind of only have one project in each category at a time. Like I'm probably only gonna be making one shawl at a time. And when I'm getting close to finishing a shawl, I'll think about my next shawl. I'm only gonna knit one sweater. When I'm getting halfway done with a sweater, I'll think about my next sweater. So for Tanya, for example, I'm halfway done with it, I would say. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not, um, but I am, you know, a good distance into it. So I'm already thinking about the next sweater I wanna make. Um, and I really loved the lace on Tanya. So I thought, I wanna find a sweater I can make that has more lace in it. And I ended up finding this one by Hohi Locatelli. Let me see if I can find it real quick. It's called Old Romance, and it has lace down the sleeves. Let me find it for you, because I think you'll like it. Okay, it's kind of girly, so this is why I love it so much. Okay, it is called Old Romance by Hohi Locatelli, and it has lace down the sleeves. Isn't that so cute? Love that. So I'm thinking that maybe when I finish Tanya, that might be something I want to cast on next. I'm not committing to it. I'm not restrict restricting myself to make that, but I know that's something that I would like to make. Not gonna cast it on yet, but I will highly consider it when I get to um, when I get to cast on a new sweater. Um, I know that I have yarn already for it because it's fingering weight, and I've got plenty of fingering weight um, yarn. I actually have a crocheted sweater that I'm going to pull out and potentially make this sweater. So um, I think that I start planning projects from patterns mostly. Like I will find a pattern that I want to make. Um, or a design, like I'll think of a design that I want to make. And then I go and I look at my stash, or if I need to, I'll go to the yarn shop and make something. Rarely do I pick yarn first, but I will buy yarn with no purpose. <laughs> so I'm not immune to that. Um, but yeah, I think typically I pick out a pattern first and then move on to yarn and yeah, I always have like a running cue in my head. I also use the cue in the favorites on Ravelry to help me keep track. Um, but I've learned it's better to not plan too far ahead and just kind of keep that like next thing in mind. Because I wanted, to, so I want to be a knitter that when Andrea Mowry or Caitlin Hunter or Hohi come out with a new pattern, that that can be like my next one. I don't want to be, I used to feel like I had to like, finish, do make that sweater that I've had in my queue for five years first because I already have the yarn for it. But no, I'm just gonna make whatever I wanna make next and I'll use the yarn that I have even if it was planned for something else because I could always get a similar yarn or sometimes even the same yarn again um, or I can just, you know, get the yarn that I need at the store if I'm able to at that time. Um, so. I don't push pressure myself to like stick to a cue or anything. Um, yeah, I feel like I ran, I feel like that train left the track and I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, so if you have any more questions, please go to the Ravelry thread or in some other way, let me know you have questions and I would love to answer them on the next episode. Okay, let's get into news. Okay, I am gonna have the biggest news for last, which is the 50th episode giveaway. So first thing is that I have a new video um, this week that actually dropped today and it is my Make 30 for 30 wrap up. So all of January I was recording little videos each day about working on my granny stripe blanket and just kind of inserting in here and there talking about the process of committing to working on one project every day for 30 days. So it's about a 33 minute video, I think. Um, a lot of it's in the beginning where I'm like setting up my area and stuff. And then I just show like little snippets of me crocheting, sometimes in time lapses and stuff here and there. So it's sort of vlog style. It's mostly talking and a little bit of like music and crochet. So it's kind of 
similar to a vlog or podcast, it's not a tutorial or anything, so it should be like a fun and easy watch to just throw on when you're, I don't know, folding laundry or want to be entertained or knitting or something like that. Um, so I will leave that linked um, below. Um, but that does mean that Make 30 for 30 is officially over. Um, however, if you want, we are continuing on into February. Nothing in the official capacity. Um, I'm probably not going to be like um, reposting things as much. I'm not gonna be posting my progress um, every Sunday, I don't think. Maybe I will, um, but I, myself and many other people are going to keep doing Make 30 for 30, but we're going to move on to a different project. So Granny Stripes got a lot of work that it wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So now it's time for a new project. So I would love to show you what I'm making and hang on, I'm gonna open this bag cause it's gonna be really crinkly. Okay, so what I'm going to be making in February, and I am, I started today, and I don't care that it's not the first of the month, and I also don't care that it's 30 days, <laughs> that it's not 30 days in this month. I'm just gonna work on this for February. This is gonna be, ooh, that did not sound good. This is gonna be my make in February project, I guess. Um, but I am going to be making a, these dish scrubbies. I'm gonna make one every day. That's my goal. And I am gonna be ma making them at school, at lunch, because I know that's the best time for me. Now these don't even take me 30 minutes. I didn't quite time myself today, but I think they take maybe 15 to 20 minutes. They're really, really fast. They are crocheted out of tulle and they're just three rounds. And these are what I use instead of sponges in the kitchen. They are literally life changing. I'm planning to do a whole video just about these and a tutorial to show you how to make these. Um, so hang tight. But basically, if you know how to crochet a circle and you can go buy three inch tool from your um, craft store, that's all you need to know. Um, but yeah, so they are literally the best things. I don't use sponges anymore because I hate the way that sp uh, sponges smell. They have a smell, even if you put them in your dishwasher every single time you wash them, sponges to me, to me, have a smell. Like I would, I would smell it on my hands. I'm, I'm hyper, hyper sensitive um, to smell in general and to sound, so <laughs> yay, so much fun. Um, but smell especially. So I, I just couldn't stand the way sponges smell. I don't know, it's so weird. But these to me don't smell. Um, I wash them in the dishwasher too. I'll either put them on the top rack, I'll put like this little hole through the little pokey things, or I'll put them in the bottom in like the silverware thing so that it doesn't fly around in the dishwasher um, so that they get sanitized. I probably put them in like every other day. That's about when I'm washing the dishes is running the dishwasher is every other day. But they are so great. So they are scrubby because they're made of tool, but they are gentle. Like I use them on, um, what's it called, nonstick pans. It gets like egg and cheese and stuff off because you can use them to scrub really hard, but it's not gonna scratch things up as far as I can tell. Um, so I first got the idea of these um, when I was in college, somebody asked me to make them. And when I first started making them, I had to actually buy bolts of tool and like cut it in a spiral. But now they sell these amazing things. It's just three inch tool. It's so awesome. This one is really weird. It's got like tears in it and they don't usually have that. Um, but you literally just scrunch it up and crochet with it. I'm using an eye hook, which I probably could go bigger. Um, I think I've used a J before too. I'm gonna experiment with that before I kind of make a tutorial and everything. But here's the one that I made today. I did not weave in the ends yet um, because I didn't bring my um, tool to weave in the ends. But look, it's literally tool. And then this one's so bright and neon. I love this one. But like, can you hear that? They're so scrubby. I probably would not use this on my skin, especially not my face, um, but so good for dishes. So love these. I'm gonna be making one every single day in February and I will give you more information about these soon. Did I leave anything out about these? Nope, I don't think so. So Make 30 for 30 is officially over, but carry on, keep hashtagging, keep tagging me, and I will be reposting stuff here and there. I have so many, I guess I should explain why I chose this. I probably have 20 of these spools of tool. 
um, because I used to make them a lot. And I also made them for um, an expo that I did one time. <laughs> and so after that, like every time I would go to Hobby Lobby or Joann's and I saw that these were on sale, I would pick up a couple. And that made my collection very big. But then they've just been sitting here because they're not like that exciting to work on, even though they're totally utilitarian. I give them as gifts all the time. Like this is all that I had left out of like, I don't know, 20, because I, I use them some, like eventually, they have, a, they have a long life, like a year for me, <laughs> which is probably a lot too long to use them, but I do sanitize them. Um, but yeah, I go through them and then I give them away. My mother-in-law loves them, so um, it, you can't have too many. So instead of having them sit around in my drawers like this, I'm gonna have them sit around in my drawers like this, taking up less space and also ready to give to anybody at a moment's notice. I could give them with like some cool dish soap for like a housewarming thing or a wedding shower gift. I mean, possibilities are endless. Um, in one of these, you can make two scrubbies, two and a half, so two solid ones. And then I don't think I have any in here that are multicolored, but it'll also, to my memory, half, uh, you can make two solid ones. And then with the rest, you can either do the first two rounds or the last round. So I'll be making a bunch of multicolored ones as well. But again, I will share all of that when I get around to recording a tutorial for this. Okay, my next bit, bit of news is so exciting. I finally have started my knitting and crochet clubs at school. Um, I actually just remembered I wanted to show you guys something, but I, it will have to wait till next week because this is already getting really long. Um, but I'm so excited about finally starting my clubs. I'm doing it a little different this semester. Um, instead of having a club after school, I am hosting clubs before school, and instead of meeting once a week for an hour, we're meeting twice a week for 30 minutes. So basically like the regular drop-off time at our school is 7.30 and then class actually starts at 8, so that's the time that we're doing the club. I'm already there by 7.30 and then the kids are pretty much getting there. I just told them to try to remember to come early. Um, we're, they're only gonna be with me for two weeks, so only four times for 30 minutes. And I'm just gonna like teach the basics and then out. And then I'm gonna have another group come in. So I will have four different groups rotating through. I have fourth graders that are crocheting, fifth graders that are crocheting, fourth graders that are knitting, and fifth graders that are knitting. So four groups, I was able to, um, I, when I handed out flyers, I handed out over 100 flyers, and um, just to fourth and fifth grade and I ended up getting, I think, 24 back, and I only could accept 20. Now, three of them were girls that I had had in my previous club, and they all signed up for the same thing they learned last year, which is crochet. So I said, instead of being in the club, like, y'all don't really need to come to the club, you already know. Um, and I guess this is really lessons more than a club, but I asked them if they would just come and help me because I'm gonna be teaching these skills really fast um, and it would be great to have helpers. So they said yes. So then I was able to fit everyone else into my, um, into my groups of five. I have one group of six, but that's okay. Um, and I think it's gonna go really, really well. So our first one today was fourth graders and in 30 minutes they had all mastered slip knot and chain. Um, I feel like I'm each time I do a club, I'm learning more about what to emphasize. So this time with crochet, I'm being a real stickler about the way that they're making their chains. I am being really picky about like, no, you cannot pick it up. If you're right-handed and holding the hook in your right hand, no, you cannot pick up the stitch with your right hand and pull it over. You must use your left hand because I know this will serve them better in the long run when we actually start doing single crochet on Thursday morning. Um, so I feel like that teaching these skills many times has helped me to hone in and like teach it faster in a way. Um, so hopefully everyone, everything else will be just as successful, but for the first day, it feels really, really good. Um, my students pay a fee that covers their materials. Um, and I chip in a little bit because I get them like really, uh, I wanna get them really nice materials. So I actually buy them um, these Clover Amour hooks and they are usually $8. And I only charge $10 for the club and I buy them also two skeins of, or two balls of yarn of acrylic 
worsted weight yarn. Um, so I got the hooks and the needles in the summer because these hooks were on sale for I think $5 a piece. So of course I grabbed those up and then I got them. Um, this is the, gonna be the first time that I'm teaching knitting on circular needles. I've usually always taught it on straight needles so it'll be interesting to see how that goes but that will be later on in the year. And those I got from Knit Picks. Um, so basically the $10 fee, I try my hardest to get the kids like the best deals that I can for the nicest materials that I can. Um, and I also, like I said, I chip in a little bit, like it doesn't quite cost $10, it's usually like $12 a kid. Um, but that to say that I went, I, I was looking at um, Hobby Lobby is usually, I get, I love this yarn and it went up in cost. I think it did. Maybe it's always been $4.99, but like in my head it wasn't. And I'm, you know, I'm paying so much attention to budget nowadays um, with my budgeting video uh, about groceries. It's not just groceries, it's every area of my life. So I was like, oh no, $5 a kid. That means if I get them two skeins, that's their whole $10. And then I've already bought all these crochet hooks and knitting needles. Like that's a, that's a lot per kid. Um, for me to put in with my own money. Um, and so I was like, oh, if I could just, if, if these would just go on sale, because you know Hobby Lobby, every other week something's 50% off and they weren't on sale. And so I thought I will just wait until Monday when the new flyer comes out and pray. <laughs> this is terrible. I'm gonna pray that the yarn goes on sale. And guess what, it did, I was so excited. So instead of having to pay um, basically for all of the knitting needles and crochet hooks for the club, um, the yarn ended up being less expensive. It wasn't $5 a ball, it was $3.50 a ball, which was just really great. Um, so I felt like I'm getting the kids more for their money, I'm getting me more for my money, and I, instead of spending, I think I saved about $60 on yarn because I waited for it to go on sale. So I was like, good job for waiting, <laughs> it was worth it. Um, but I went to Hobby Lobby and I spent a lot of time, I asked the kids beforehand, tell me two colors that you like and be really specific. You can't just tell me blue, you have to tell me like turquoise or light blue or baby blue. Somebody told me they wanted Lakers colors, somebody told me they wanted cotton candy. And I wrote it all down and then I went to the store and you know, one kid at a time, I'm grabbing their two balls of yarn and checking them off. I had a full shopping cart. This is the most yarn I've ever bought for my clubs because I have 21 kids that I was buying, actually 22 kids that I was buying for. So, no, 21. 21 kids that I was buying for, which means 42 skeins of yarn. So I took a picture of myself <laughs> with the cart full of yarn, it was crazy. And then you should, should have seen the checkout uh, girl's face when I had all of that yarn. And um, it was funny, this is, this is an important lesson too. Um, when you go up to the register, it doesn't matter what store you're at, you, it's a good idea if you can to have, an, have in your head like um, a total that you're gonna be spending. Or at least have in your head like the number of items that you're buying. So like I knew I had 42 skeins of yarn and before I even left work that day, I had added up how much that was gonna cost me. So I knew, like I knew how much I was gonna be spending and I knew how many I had. And so while she was counting and stuff, it was getting a little chaotic. And so when she had gone through all of them, I said, uh, how, many, how many balls of yarn did you get there? She was like, well, I don't know. It, I have to put it in manually. I had like 49. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't think that's right. Can I step aside and count? Because I wanted to make sure too that I had gotten enough yarn for all of my kids because they would be very sad if I had missed their yarn. So I stepped aside and I counted and I was like, okay, 42. So I went up there and we, ca we counted them together <laughs> and then 42 and it was just exactly the amount that I had calculated. I mean, I was off a few cents because I can never remember what taxes, <laughs> but anyway, that's a lesson for you. I would have paid for seven extra skeins that I didn't have, but I knew my number in my head. So there you go. It was crazy, 42 skeins of yarn. It took a long time to pick all those out. I think I was there for like an hour, <laughs> maybe 45 minutes, I don't know. But I'm so happy that I, and that's I think why I didn't do it in the first semester this year because it is, it's a lot of work and time 
prepping. It's stuff that I love, but like mentally to do all of that. And then also to like, I was thinking I was gonna have to stay after school and I love, like work is great, but at the end of the day, I just wanna go home. <laughs> And so being able to do it before school is like great for me as a morning person. I am in my prime. Like if you're a teacher, like your morning class is better behaved than your afternoon class. Why? It's not them. Well, yeah, it is. It's them a little bit, but it's also you because you are probably on your game in the morning. And then by the afternoon, you're like, I'm done. And so are the kids. So there you go. I found out a way that it would work for me and I'm so happy that I finally done it. I also have some lovely packages that were sent to me so long ago. And if you are still watching me, you probably think I'm t a terrible person because I didn't even send you like a thank you or anything. I'm so sorry, but I have them still untouched because I wanna be able to send you a picture and a thank you note when I finally give these beautiful, bags that were made and these yarns that were donated um, to my students. So I'm gonna wait till next week to show those and talk about those and really shout out these amazing people for um, sending stuff for my kids. Um, but I really hope that you're still here and you don't think that I'm just horrible and took your things and didn't say thank you. That is not what I meant to do. It just took me a long time to get around to actually doing the club. Okay. I need a sip of tea, but then we're finally gonna talk about the 50th episode giveaway. Okay, you guys, 50 episodes. I have been podcasting for just over a year. I looked it up in my very first podcast, while not my first YouTube video, my first podcast, Love and Stitches episode one, was on January 10th of 2019. So in, in that time, um, I have really grown like my love for recording videos and editing. I love editing videos and putting them on YouTube has really become like my passion. I love doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> I just really, really do. And so thank you to everyone, no matter if this is your first episode or you've been here for all 50 episodes, I appreciate you so much. If people weren't watching, um, would I continue making videos? Maybe, I do really like doing it, but you're really the encouragement to um, make sure I stick to my routine and record every week and get my videos edited for Thursday mornings and you're just the reason that I continue to do it. You ask all the good questions, you have all the good comments, y'all are the best. So if you want to, <laughs> I feel like it would be really a good time, and I need to do this too, to go back and watch episode one. I'm in a different spot in the same room, um, but I think it really would be fun to compare that first episode to where things are now. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go back and watch that. I think that would be really funny to see like the things I was working on, the things I was that were important to me then, um, but that was just a year ago for me. But in podcast episodes, that's like a long time. A lot of things change. Um, but yeah, I'll link my first episode so that if you want to go back and watch that as a comparison, you can. Okay, let's have a giveaway. Okay, I have a small little physical giveaway, but I also have something to give to everybody. So first, let's do the physical giveaway. So I had some wonderful makers reach out to me with some things to donate. Okay, one person, no. I had a dyer reach out to me, a designer, and then I begged somebody to get, <laughs> I begged someone to please give me some things so that I could give it away because I love it so much. I don't typically ask um, for things to give away because that's a tricky conversation because you don't wanna sound like conceited, I guess, but I really wanted this to give away to you guys, so I'm so excited. Okay, so the first thing is some yarn, these mini skeins. These are from Farm Girl Fibers. I did a collaboration with Shauna in July, I think. My Playtime Shawl, one of my best-selling crochet patterns, and her yarn, my gosh, it is soft. Um, this is a, this is her Clover Fingering Weight, which is 85% Superwash Merino and 15% Nylon, which makes her the fluffiest, softest base. So you, if you win, 
which all you have to do is comment on this episode, like literally that is it. You can just like put a smiley face or you can give me a comment or a question, I don't care. Comment on this episode, I guess. You should just comment one time because a lot of times it's kind of strange. <laughs> I guess I guess what I'm saying is I'm not gonna monitor that, but like one time is enough. <laughs> but if you just happen to say something like don't like, it's not like Instagram where you can just tag people like, a comment one comment is good can we can we trust each other to do that <laughs> i guess i can't really control what you do but one comment would be great please <laughs> okay so if you comment you are entered to win this little mini set which is lots of fun i don't actually know the names of these colors um, but they you can see that they do kind of go together so if you win these obviously you can do whatever you want with them um, you can um, knit them into one project or you can use them for a scrappy project. Each of these is 87 yards or 20 grams. So that's um, 100 grams right there. That's one skein of yarn. Um, so yeah, that would be very, very pretty. Um, I guess now would be a good time to say that if you are in the United States, um, you uh, this giveaway is open internationally, but I will say if you're in the United States, like. I will ship it to you no problem. If you are international and you win, we'll probably have to talk about shipping and we might have to do, um, you might have to cover those costs because it might be really expensive. I don't know, maybe it's really cheap to ship to your country. I'm not really sure. But let's, let's say that it's open internationally with a contingency on, we'll talk about the shipping when we get there. But yes, there is the yarn that you can win. Then also Boston Jen, I love Boston Jen. She is Jennifer Lasson Designs. She has donated a pattern of your choice. She's got so many, so many great ones. She's got knitting and crochet patterns, which is why I'm gonna leave it up to the winner's choice. Um, but she does have some patterns that, that are for mini skeins. Um, I think there is a pattern that's like you have a main color and then use the minis. Um, so check her out, Jennifer Lasson Designs. Thank you so much, Jen. She um, offered to donate a pattern and I thought that this would be perfectly paired with this yarn as a giveaway. Okay, and I have one more thing. <laughs> this is what I begged for. I guess I didn't beg, I asked. I asked and I said, please, it would be so great for my 50th episode. So I showed you a couple episodes back, this new tool that I love. And these are called end minders. I got y'all some end minders, I'm so excited. So this is an end minder. Basically, it's like an adorable little plastic bobbin. This one's a sheep that you can wind up your ends on so they're not bothering you and dangling and in your way. And so these are by Crafty Flutterby Creations, and I have her card right here. Crafty Flutterby Creations. And she makes these gorgeous end minders. And I was just looking at the ones that she sent for the giveaway, and I'm so jealous. I want to steal one of these because she has sent her, um, um, it's the larger size of the sheep, in white and black, white and black, but I don't even wanna show you this because I literally want to steal them, but I'm not because I have integrity. <laughs> Is that the right word? <laughs> These are gray, like marbly looking, not marble, what is the word? Granite maybe looking? Bunnies. Oh, I want these, they're so cute. I'm gonna have to get some for myself. But so, in summary, if you comment below, international or domestic to the United States, <laughs> you will get this set of mini skeins, a pattern from Boston Gin, and these two sets of end minders, which I'm so totally jealous of you. <laughs> that will be what you win. So that is the prize for this episode, for 50 episodes. So comment away and you can be a winner. I will give it away on the next podcast, so be sure that you are watching. Now, obviously only one person can win that, so I wanna do something for everybody, and this is like just for YouTube viewers who have gotten to this point. I'm not going to advertise this anywhere else, but since it's my 50th episode, I am doing 50% off all of my patterns on Ravelry and on Etsy. 
All you will need is the code below, which I'm gonna put below because I haven't decided on it yet, but it's probably gonna have the number 50 on it. It'll probably be like Love and Stitches 50 or Podcast 50, I don't know. Future Natalie will decide and put it on the screen. But from the moment this podcast drops until the next Thursday at 9 a.m. because that's when my, uh, 9 a.m. Central Time because that's when my 51st podcast will come up, um, you can get all of my patterns for 50% off. So is that like buy one, get one free? I think it's, I don't know. Math is so hard. This is why I teach reading. I say that like multiple times a week, but Again, I'm not advertising that anywhere. That's just for you guys. So um, please enjoy. If there's any of my patterns you've been like waiting to get, there is your opportunity to get 50% off any of my patterns. Okay, ah, so exciting 50 episodes. So let's move into a little bit of life stuff and then we will wrap things up as I get this yarn fuzz off of my lip gloss. <laughs> okay, so this week, um, has been, it's been a really productive week because my husband has been out of town. He left on Friday morning to go to New York. I'm so jealous. He's been having a blast. Like he's, they, it's mostly his um, guy trip uh, with one of his friends that he has Dallas Stars hockey season tickets with. And they went to New York and got to see the Dallas Stars play three times. Actually, the last game is right now. Um, so I'm gonna have to go watch that here in a second. Um, but yeah, he's been having a blast. And so he's been gone. It's Tuesday, he's been gone since Friday morning. By the time this is up, he will be back. He comes back tomorrow. Um, since there's supposed to be storms tomorrow, really hoping that um, everything goes smooth with his flight. Um, but yeah, he, he has been gone. And if you're married or you live with somebody, um, it's so nice to have time to yourself. I miss him. I cannot wait for him to come back, but it's really great to like go to work and then come home and like nothing has changed and everything is clean. <laughs> I've been organizing. I've been putting, um, I did a project where I changed all of the spices um, into like the glass spice jars that I'd been putting off since Christmas when I got the spice jars. Um, I organized some other things. Um, I have been making videos. Uh, I've been making my weekly cleaning schedule video, which I know ha has been requested. So that is coming soon. Um, and I also am gonna make like a daily routine one at some point, but not right now. I have too many videos, like long-term videos going right now. Um, I also recorded, um, making freezer burritos and tacos. So I, somebody asked for that. I did record that. So everything that I've been doing, like I'm like, let's just record it because people could be interested in it. So I've been doing a lot of organizing and a lot of making videos. So it's been really, really productive um, to be doing that. But like I said, I'm excited for him to come back. <laughs> um, okay, lastly, things that are bringing me joy. So strangely, the thing that is bringing me joy this week is actually budgeting. Maybe that's not a surprise because I've been talking about that a lot with my video last week, my $30 a week grocery budget, which was only a January challenge. We're not doing that anymore. Um, but I have had, I have way too much fun on Google Sheets, which if you don't know, it's basically like a spreadsheet like Excel, but it is online. So you can open it up on your like work computer and then at home on your phone. Um, but I have made this little budget template for us and I love, love, love playing with it, moving numbers around, tracking our expenses. And it's just bringing me like peace, I think, to know exactly what we're doing and how we're saving for our vacations, which was the point of the January challenge. Um, so it's just been really good. I don't know, that's bringing me joy. Isn't that funny? I absolutely love it. All the organizing and cleaning that I've been getting done has brought me so much joy too. Okay, guys, I think that's it. This is really, really long. I think this might be my longest podcast ever. I see 118 minutes, which I know some of it is me like fussing with my hair and fixing my lips and stuff, um, but it'll be a long one. But happy 50th podcast. If you've been here since the beginning, wow. Make sure to go watch that first episode. Make sure to comment so you can get a chance to win. And don't forget that all my patterns are 50% off until next Thursday. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.